and welcome to this evening service. It's good to have this time together apart, united by the Spirit in Christ. I hope you've had a good week. I've been talking to people this week about different ways of praying. I have quite a vivid imagination, so I like to use my imagination in prayer. For example, if I want to pray for someone who is going through a really hard time, I sit in God's presence and picture this person. Sometimes the situation I'm praying for is so complex and it's hard to find the right words. So I imagine the person and the difficulties they are going through and invite Jesus into the situation in my mind. And sometimes I look at the person in my mind and I look at Jesus and I just sigh. Not everyone will be able to engage with this pictorial way of praying, but if you are able, I invite you to still yourself in God's presence now, wherever you are. Imagine Jesus coming to sit with you or stand by your side. Imagine others in our local community also joining in the service. Imagine Jesus with them. Look at Jesus. What do you want to say to him? Maybe you just want to sigh and that's okay. Maybe you want to tell him you love him or talk to him about something that is troubling you. And look and listen. What is he saying to you today? As we gather together, let's open our hearts and minds. Lord Jesus, help us to hear your word and obey it, to receive your love and to share it, to be healed, and so to play our part in healing the world. Amen. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. It had been a hot, dusty, busy day and we were all a bit weary, but thankfully the day was getting closer to its ending and rest would be soon. But then, out of the blue, then he started with questions. I mean, why couldn't he have asked us sooner? Anyway, they started. Who do people say the Son of Man is? Well, that was an easy one to answer because we had heard people muttering behind their hands to each other, playing a guessing game. And we had heard some, emboldened by his presence, actually call out, 
He's John the Baptist. No, he's Elijah. Well, I think he's Jeremiah. He's a prophet. That's who they say you are. Then it happened. I'm not sure now whether I sort of knew it would happen, that it had to happen. There was an inevitability about it. He turned to me and looked into my eyes. He looked deep into my very being, into my soul, and asked, But who do you say that I am? Of course, those who know me, really know me, warts and all, the good bits and the not-so-good bits, weren't surprised by my reaction. They have seen me many times like a bull in a china chop. Or better still, being a fisherman, a choice fish thrashing around in a net, no holes barred. Wham! I was straight in, no hesitation. But who do you say I am? You are the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. I don't know where that came from. The words just seemed to tumble out of my mouth. But he knew. Jesus knew. Blessed are you, Simon Peter, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. I must admit I did feel a little bit pleased with myself when he said that. But then he said something else, something I wasn't quite sure about, didn't quite know what it could mean. Not the first part, when he said my name would be Peter, I didn't mind that, after all. I don't know that many Peters, but there are always plenty of Simons around, so perhaps it was a good thing and I would be noticed more. Anyway, it was the last part, about being the rock on which he would build his church and having the keys to the kingdom of heaven given me. That's the confusing bit. Me? Keys to the kingdom of heaven? That's some responsibility, I can say. Anyway, I digress. Like I said, I didn't quite understand it, but I couldn't help but feel chuffed, you know, being singled out as the man for the job. But then he went and spoilt it for me by being a bit sharp. Not just to me, but all of us. A little stern, even. Saying, no, not saying ordering us, do not tell anyone who I am, that I am the Messiah. Well, I wanted to shout it from the rooftops, wanted to tell everyone, but he knew. He knew it wasn't the right time. There would be a right time, a right time for people to hear. I felt sure of that, for there is always a right time. A right time for people to know who this Jesus is. And we told them. Jesus says to us, Who do people say I am? And he asks us all now, Who do you say I am? I wonder, who do we see when we look at someone? And who does someone see when looking at us? There is always a right time, a right time for people to know who Jesus is. What will you tell them. Lord Jesus Christ, you could have chosen anyone as the foundation for your church, but you didn't. You chose Peter, the man who misunderstood you, who denied you, who failed you time and time again. A man we might have written off, but who you saw instead as a rock on which to build your kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, when we let you down in our turn, remind us of Peter 
and help us to believe you can still use us. Amen. Let us pray. To the bidding, Christ, Son of the living God, the response is, hear us and help us. Lord, transform us by your love, that we may know and do your will, that we may live and work to your praise and glory. Through Christ, the King of glory, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Christ, Son of the living God, hear us and help us. Lord, we present ourselves, our souls and bodies to you. You give us life, you give us love, you give us yourself. May we give our lives, our love and ourselves to you. We pray for the unity of your church, that we may work together for the good of all. We give thanks for the gifts you have given to us. Let us use them to your glory. We pray especially for Adam, our vicar, and the ministry team, and all who exercise the gifts of ministry, teaching and healing, and comforting to all in need. Christ, Son of the living God, hear us and help us. We pray for all people, that their talents and abilities may be able to be used. Bless each in their vocation and work. We remember those who have been made redundant and the unemployed. We pray for those whose work is dull and mechanical. And we remember all whose talents are wasted and thwarted. Christ, Son of the living God, hear us and help us. Bless our homes with holiness and hospitality, with cheerfulness and kindliness, with generosity and goodness. We pray for our loved ones, our neighbours and our friends the communities to which we belong and the places where we work. Christ, Son of the living God, hear us and help us. We pray for all who suffer through the cruelty of others, for all who have no confidence in themselves or in the world. We pray for all who find making relationships difficult and we remember the lonely and those who have been rejected or betrayed. We pray for all who are in trouble, need, sickness or any other adversity. And in a moment of quiet, we pray for those we know personally that are in need of our Lord's healing touch. Christ, Son of the living God, hear us and help us. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who have recently died and now rest with you in your eternal kingdom. 
give comfort and peace to all who grieve. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We pray the collect. God of glory, the end of our searching, help us to lay aside all that prevents us from seeking your kingdom and to give all that we have to gain the pearl beyond all price. Through our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we say together our benefice prayer. Ever-living, ever-loving God, we thank you for our church family and your world that we serve. Grant that we may honour you in our prayer and praise and share the good news of your love and build up all through loving service. Help us to give everyone a place to belong and a way to follow Jesus. Amen. Gathering all our prayers together, we say the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. It's been great to use our imaginations this evening, to imagine Peter's thoughts as he declares that Jesus is the Messiah, and to be reminded that Jesus asks this question of all of us, who do you say I am? There are so many titles for Jesus, Prince of Peace, Saviour, Lord, Son of God. And as well as his titles, there are ways to describe how we come to know him through life's ups and downs. As constant presence, faithful friend, generous love. It's also good to be reminded that it's our task to tell and show people who Jesus is. To do this, we need God's help. So let's conclude this time together, asking for God's help in the week ahead. Lord Jesus, may we learn more and more day by day who you are. Help us to tell people about you and to show who you are in the way we relate to each other. Help us to see you in each other and so to reach out in loving friendship. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. And once again, let us join in the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, 
forevermore. Amen. Come like fire in the winter Come like water in the desert Come like oil running without end Holy Spirit, come Soon.